let us let us irify the agents. Um, okay, so to, to to irify them, we are going to go to the infection transition. Well, so so we're going to have agents infected by this message, and so we've got to think. Okay, what's going to be affected by this message? What's going how is the, the message going to operationally matter? How is it going to affect things? And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's going to lead people who were susceptible to become infected. If an infected person already is someone already infected and they receive the message, we're going to treat it as not having a significant difference um, in their status. And there's some immunological reasons for that. Among other things, they may have uh, quite high levels of um, of uh, viral reproduction within them, very, quite high levels of viremia, and a small additional dose is unlikely to make a difference in the dynamics of that. Another thing, their immune mechanisms may be stirred up. They have these cytotoxic T lymphocytes circulating, and uh, those will quickly attack new infected cells. So in short, we're going to treat infection as a significant event only if you're susceptible. So it's really this transition from susceptible to infected that's of issue here. And we're going to have this become change from being a rate, which occurs at some sort of uh, some general time, uh, time constant. And instead, it's going to be based on a message. So if we go, to that, we go to that transition from susceptible to infected, instead of being a rate, we have it depend on an message. And the message, at this point, there's only one message in the whole model, so we're just going to say unconditional. It's unconditional. It, if you receive a message and you're in the susceptible state, you're going to go to the infective state. We don't have multiple types of messages circulating. So that's one piece we have to, we have to put in place. Okay? Um, and uh, we, can, we can leave it like, uh, leave it like that. We could add an action here. Um, oh, and in fact, we already have an action. We have an action that said, I got infected, and the time is such and such. We'll leave that in place so that we know people are getting infected. So I'd ask you now, if I run this model, will anything be different? OK, so, <laughs> so yes, there's, there's a key piece missing, which is that there has to be some initial infected, right? There has to be some initial person infected. So we're going to have to deal with that. There's actually one more thing as well, and it had to do with the, the issue of multiple state charts. We have to route messages to the state chart. And in fact, by default, that's already done. I mean, if you go look at, at a person here, and you go to the, um, to the uh, agent, um, agent parameters here, um, and it says forward message to infection state chart. So that should be fine. This is a newfangled feature in this version of AnyLogic, and I think that should, by default, give us things that used to be added in uh, explicitly. Um, by good practice, you could put something in there um, as well. OK, but we have to set it up so that someone starts infective, OK? Um, this tells you how you can manually get that state chart to receive the message, OK? Um, OK. So we're going to have to get an initial